Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mini Masterpiece Theater Watercolor Workshop. Uh, today, we're going to be working on surf meets the turf and doing a little fun, foamy, whimsical shoreline. So if you're interested to see how, stay tuned. Let's get started. Today, we are going to be working on basically a surf and turf. So the ocean as it meets the shoreline. So kind of a gradient of ocean. And then, of course, we have our foamy surf um, as it as it meets the, the shoreline. Now, oftentimes, if I had a lot of time, I would probably do some masking with some masking fluid. And those of you who have been following me and done some of my other wor watercolor workshops know that I've been struggling um, with masking fluid, sometimes not working right. And the thing that um, I will tell you, it can be tricky. So if you are struggling with using masking fluid, masking fluid is basically a, a rubber emulsion that dries rubbery on your on your paper and it blocks any of the paint from getting to the paper. So it basically keeps those areas white for those of the who um, those of you who don't have never heard of masking fluid. But it, it is really, really touchy and there are different qualities of them out there. And you do have to let things be dry. Now you have to let the page be dry before you put the masking fluid on. You need to let the masking, and I'm talking about bone dry. You need to let the masking fluid completely dry before you paint over it. And then you need to let any painted over it dry before you remove it. So everything has to be dry on all those three levels and you're gonna get the best results. And I think that was my challenge is I, I talked about patience earlier and how much patience is a part of watercolor and that's true for using masking fluid. So if you are struggling with your masking fluid um, not working out right now, mine also kind of hardened. So I was trying to also thin it. And so um, it, it anyway, it can be tricky. Don't feel bad if you're struggling, but just practice a little bit on other paper instead of doing it on a project. Try not to put too much on your project. But if I had time to deal with this and to know that this was going to work, I probably would use maybe some masking fluid to mask off some of those bright whites for my foam, for my wave parts. But because I am not, um, I don't have the time working with you guys, you're not gonna wanna wait five to 10 minutes while my masking fluid dries. And then and then it could potentially, I could have problems afterwards. I'm gonna have to learn to master it myself before I try to tell you. but. Um, but you can use masking in order to do this, but I'm going to be using some alternatives and I'm going to try out a, a couple things and see how they work. Um, and I mean, some of them will, will, won't work as well as masking fluid, but I think they're a nice alternative. So uh, the things I'm going to be trying out, and I'll do a little tester. Um, I'm going to be trying out, now I've used a, just a white or clear candle. This is just a, from a birthday cake. And I've also used a white crayon because it's really waxy. And what that does is it lays down some wax that blocks the page. And again, keeps it from absorbing the pigment of the, of the paint. Now I also thought <clears throat> it's really hard to see white on white. So I thought I might try um, using a colored crayon and see how that works. So that pigment's gonna show up, but if it's close enough to the colors I'm gonna be using, I'm wondering if that will be okay. So I'm thinking about trying that. And then I also, you can also use an oil pastel that's not water soluble, um, and that might work as well. So I thought I would just do a little tester so you guys can see the effects of these different materials. And then I might use one or a combination of them. So I'm just gonna do these in order. So this is the white, the, the um, I'm sorry, the, the white candle or clear candle. Now the white crayon, those are my two that I've had experience with. The colored crayon and the white oil pastel, which of course has some pigment on it, so. <laughs> Maybe get the pigment off before. That's actually what would work, that pigment. And then I have a colored oil pastel. That's just a light sea film green. Okay, so I just want to paint over those. I just wanted to show you what those look like. And that's what I would recommend if you're thinking of trying out a new thing on your paper. Before you do that, 
try it out in this format. And I'm just going to pick up, it doesn't matter what color I use, I'm just testing it, but I'm going to pick up some phthalo green. That's the color, one of the colors I'm going to be using. And I'm just going to run it over the top of those and see what kind of effects I get. And, you know, actually, probably, um, I mean, this is that colored crayon. Let me get you closer. Any of those really have a good effect. So I don't really mind any of those. I think I like this uh, candle look. Now you could also dab off the pigment if you, you can kind of um, rub it a little bit and sometimes that'll massage the color into it if you want to soften it. And it also can lift up some of the pigment off of the, um, so if I kind of massage it in, it softens it a little bit. So the thing about using wax and the problem with the, the, the main problem with using anything wax related is that wax is going to stay on your page. You're never going to be able to fill in those, those um, areas that have the wax. Whereas if you use a masking fluid, you can go in and change your shapes. So you really have to decide ahead of time what you want as far as the shapes are and, and be sure that's what you want permanently because you can't change it afterwards very easily. So, okay, I I think a lot of those work. Um, I might just try out a mix of them because I'm going to do a lot of sea foam here. So I'm going to try them out and just play around with it, I think. That'll be fun because I'll get variations. The other thing that you could do to start is using a watercolor pencil if you have one. You can use a graphite pencil, but it might you know, if you if you're concerned about that showing up, if you use a watercolor pencil, that's going to dissolve as you do your work, so you don't have to worry about that as much. So let's say you just want to kind of mark out the shoreline. You want to make sure you get your patterns and kind of know where things are. So I can start with I'm just using the lightest. It's kind of a gray. Um, I'm just going to lightly kind of create a shoreline, and maybe I want to have a series of wave looking areas. I'm not gonna make like, we're looking down on it. So I don't want to create, um, I'm not looking at a wave curl, but I'm looking at maybe the little foam lines of, of waves. So maybe I wanna have a couple of those that I can maybe put in there. So just marking where I want them. I don't know if you guys can see those lines. I'm doing them very lightly. So I'm just, telling the story of, okay, this is where I want to maybe have some foam lines so that when I'm putting in the wax, I have an idea of the shapes that I'm wanting to make. Now, I don't have a particular photograph that I'm going from, but you can use a photograph and just look at how the foam patterns are. I'm just gonna do, you know, try to do some random patterns and see how it turns out. So. I'm starting with, I really want, uh, you know, a nice foam line along this, where the sand meets the water. So I'm gonna start with my, my white candle. And I don't wanna basically draw a line. I want to have it be really uneven. So I'm gonna kinda like, you know, scribble it in. And because I can't really see how that looks, it's, I'm not going to really know exactly what that's going to look like until I go over it. So that's the tricky part of this. With the masking fluid, it does have some tint in it usually, which can help you see it on your page and help you get really the design that you want. And that's why I thought it might be cool to try out this colored pencil. Okay, so I did this line here. I'm going to use my white crayon and I'm just And maybe there's a few 
fine lines in the very back. Now I could also take wax paper if I really wanted some fine lines. I could take some wax paper and draw with, with a little stylus, but I'm just gonna find a pointed area on this crayon and try to see if I can make some. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit before I actually put paint to paper, let's talk about color because one of the other things that's challenging is color mixing. And when we're talking about sand, that's a little bit tricky because if we look at all the colors that I have here, none of them, this is gold, it's not, this is probably the closest color to sand, but, um, but this is actually gold. It's not just plain watercolor. So I'm not using that. But um, if I look at this, none of them look like ocean, they're not clearly ocean sand to me. So I want to get an idea of what I want to create, what the color is that I want. Um, I like this, this phthalo green for my light colors of the close to the shore. This is a Caribbean shoreline. <laughs> uh, but I have to figure out the sand and that's a little bit trickier. So if I look at the color wheel, um, I notice one of the things that I have here is this yellow orange. This yellow ochre is kind of a, a really warm yellow. And of course, yellow is the closest thing or browns, right? This is a really cool brown and this is a really warm yellow. So maybe these can kind of tone each other down a little bit and maybe a nice blend of those. This is also a nice warm um, color, which I could consider if I, I wanted a little darker. So um, I could consider those, but I also don't want it quite to be yellow, I want it to be a little bit more tan, a little more beige. And that's why this has a little coolness to it. That's gonna tone down that, that oranginess. Um, I could also tone it down with some either Payne's Gray or Indigo. I, those are two go-tos that I have that, that can tone down um, a warm yellow. Cause the warm yellow already has, if you, if you know the color wheel, if it's yellow and it's warm, it's it's got some level of red in it because you're always adding the next primary to warm it up, right? If you go cool, you're adding the next primary, which is blue. So these are the cooler tones. So if I'm adding a, if I'm adding the three primaries together, right? So yellow, red, and blue, I get grays. I get basically kind of levels of gray. So if I'm already starting with a yellow and a red together and I just add some blue tone to it, that's going to tone it down and give me a little bit grayer toned down color. So um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try a little bit of some of the yellow ochre. And I'm going to add a little bit of this raw sienna. And then the raw umber, I'm using my schematic to make sure because sometimes you can't really tell by just looking at them in the wells. And that's going to have, you know, those has more, there's going to be some kind of blue tone in there that's cooled that off. Okay, so I've got those three together. And I'm going to just mix them together. Because I'm thinking the water is going on top of it. So I want, it's going to be have some coolness for where the water goes because a lot of the sand is going to be wet. So I think for the wet sand, that could work. And then maybe a little bit brightened up a little bit for the dry sand, I can add a little more of the ochre. So just kind of adjusting it for what you're looking for. So this is the little bit warmer sand, a little bit cooler sand, and then I can even make it cooler where the water's hitting by, I think I'm gonna use the indigo. Indigo's um, a, a blue and then also has some black in it. So it's gonna be, tone it down even more. So that's gonna look like the wet sand. So, we have these gradients of sand. I'm this, and this has a nice graininess to it, which is kind of fun. Um, I can also try the Payne's gray instead. 
they can behave different. So if you have one or the other, if you don't, you can mix maybe some of your warm blue with some black and you could probably get some level of indigo. Let's see what this one does. That looks a little muddier to me. Yeah, I like the, uh, I don't like that. I don't like the paints gray as much as I like the uh, indigo. So if you don't have that, like I said, you could maybe do Prussian blue with a little bit of black, your whatever black that you have, but experiment, figure out your colors that you want. The other colors that I'm going to be using, I want it to be real warm. So this Prussian blue has a warm hue to it. Um, I like that. The Antwerp does too. This is just a deeper color. And then the phthalo blue, those are real warm. These are my cooler blues. And then these are my warmer blues. So, um, so yeah, I think the phthalo blue and the Prussian blue are some good additions. So let me bring those out and just see what they look like. So I think that's my mid my mid value, and then my dark value. So planning ahead, I mean, you can do this right on your project, but if you're just not sure what colors to use, play around a little bit ahead of time and just see, and then you can go on to your project. Okay, and then the Prussian. I love that Prussian blue. Okay, so those are my, my light, mid, and dark. And then I have my light mid and dark of my browns so i've got my values that i'm looking for in the colors the palette that i want and for my first wash i always like to go light to dark so i'm going to do the lightest and then bring in the darker colors and i'm just going to use my this is my three quarter inch i believe yeah three quarter inch and i'm starting with my i'm going to start with my sand Now I'm gonna actually go from the top down because I this is all wet and I'm not quite, I don't want too much mixing and mingling right there. I actually wanna do more of a layered over that. So I'm gonna start from the top and work down and give that time to dry a little bit. All right, for my darkest, um, deepest shade is going to be that Prussian. I don't want it to be, you know, normally you work light from dark. And in this case I am, going to be working from the darker area, but I want it to be a light shade of that darker color. So I'm just going to make sure it's nice and watered down and I'm just going to bring in Now I'm going to take some of that phthalo. Okay, and now I'm bringing in that phthalo green. And now this is dry enough that it's not going to bleed out the green too much. I mean, maybe a tiny bit, but it seems like it's not really taking it too far, and that's okay. I don't mind if it bleeds a little bit, but I just don't want it to be sending it all the way down my page. So. Okay, so now I have a first wash. I don't mind in this case if this is still wet. I'm kind of doing now a wet on wet. So now I'm gonna do another another wash using my colors. So now I'm going to my larger, this is a 14 Master Sable uh, by Blick. Uh, it's a Kalinske Sable and it can hold a lot. So I have to be really careful not to 
I, if I don't want too much liquid, I have to, you know, dab off a lot of that water because I, I want to get mostly this pigment in here. Hello, everybody. Just a reminder to please hit the like button, subscribe, share, comment. Any interaction that you have with my uh, videos will help my YouTube channel get noticed and support the content. So um, now let's get back to the program. Thanks. And I'm going to bring back some more of that. Kind of mixing the, the Prussian and the uh, Thalo together. I want some. Just want to have movement of that water. So just dropping in a bit of chunks there. Let it, let it, um, it's wet on wet. So it's going to bleed out a little bit. Maybe bring, even bring a little bit in here. It might be a good time to go ahead and dry this layer, and then I can put some additional layers of depth in there. It hasn't kept a ton of the white. I mean, I can see those white shapes in there, but it's not real, it's not popping really bright. Like maybe I would have wanted this first layer is the best. I'm liking that. But some of these other ones are a little bit softer and I don't mind the mix of it, but um, but maybe it's less than I wanted, but I can go, I can go back in and put some whites on top. And there's different ways to do that. And we'll get to that um, um, during that part, but I'm gonna be using maybe some gouache, but you could also use if you're, open to mixed medium, which we're already doing because we're adding wax. So um, you could do like an acrylic ink or things like that. So we can try to bring back some of that white that we couldn't keep with this particular technique. And as always, it does dry a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna go and layer some more of the same colors just to get some deeper colors. And I might even, we'll see, I might add a little bit of the indigo to darken up some of my Deep my my uh, deepest areas too. Now, right here at the shoreline, I want to, this is nice and dry now, so I'm going to create some, some wet sand and some shadow here by adding a little bit of the indigo to the sand color. I'm going to soften the bottom of that just by a clean brush. I'm just cleaning it up. So I want, I want it to show a smooth transition from that darker wet sand to my light sand. Okay, now this is a kind of a wave formation here. So I'm gonna try to define that shape a little bit just by bringing in like a low light in front of it and see, because I'm going to make that lighter. So I want to try to make some contrast. So I'm just going to try to bring in a little bit just along the bottom of that, the shape, just to define that shape. I'm defining that that's a wave shape. See how just by adding that little bit of shadow there, I'm saying, oh, that's like a wave line there that I didn't really, it wasn't really clearly defined before. And then I have another one up here and I'm gonna use more of the blue, the Prussian blue 
there here I use more of the green because this is more my green colors. This is more shallow, so it's a little bit greener because some of that yellow sand is showing be beneath that clear bluish water. So now I'm just going to try to define this little line here. I'm going to soften this side of it a little bit with some with a clean brush. There's kind of a little bit of a wave pattern back in here, so I can define that a little bit, but I don't want that to be as clearly. That one's a little bit, um, a little messier. So all I'm going to do is go in and just create some shadow around some of these foam lines. All right, I still want to bring a little bit darker. I want this top part a little darker, so I think I'm going to go ahead and bring in a little more indigo, my Prussian blue. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and dry that. All right, I want to bring some of the uh, white back. So I'm going to go ahead and start with some gouache, which is an opaque watercolor. It's still water soluble, water activatable. So unlike an acrylic, this can always be reactivated. But it's more opaque than a watercolor. And there are white watercolors that are more that have some um, opacity as well. They they always have a little bit of chalkiness. White watercolors, but the gouache is a, a designed to be opaque. So it's going to be probably more opaque than you're going to find in just the white watercolor. All right, let me move these over so I can scoot back to my. All right, and I'm using my smaller, this is an eight, Flick Master Sable Flinsky also, um, because I wanna really be able to do some detail. So I don't want a lot of water. It does, these brushes hold a lot of water. So I wanna actually get a lot of that. That's why I'm using the fresh wash because even though I actually do have some dried wash, it's really hard to, to soften up and and um, to uh, reactivate. And so it's harder to pick up as much of the pigment without adding lots of water. And because I, I want some detail and I don't want a ton of water, it's just easier to use it fresh out of the tube in this particular case. Now I don't want it fully what wash. I wanted a nice mix. I'm going to be tapping and wiggling. I want it to really look foamy and organic. I'm not drawing lines. I'm dabbing it in.
Now the parts that I really um, need to work on that I'm not happy with based on after I see where my marks are, and that's the challenge of using this technique is I can't really see where I'm scribbling until later, is I've got to fix these, these little squiggly lines back here. I don't love those. Um, so I'm going to, this is where I'm going to have to work on fixing those by just making them fit. Right now it's just, they just don't really <laughs> just look like scribbles back there. So I am going to be working on somehow connecting those a little bit. Fix. This is basically an old wave that crashed and spread apart. And I'm just connecting them so that they're not floating out there. If you do use masking fluid, do not dry, do not try to speed up the drying by using a hair dryer. You will change the chemical properties and it probably won't come off your project. And I'll tear your paper. All right, they're starting to look better now. Not over till it's over, folks. As I always say with watercolor, you just it's not as forgiving as acrylics, but that doesn't mean that you have to give up either. You just have to work with it. It's all about shapes. I'm just thinking about what shapes do I like? What shapes don't I like? Um, I'm creating shapes by doing kind of like negative space. I'm, I'm doing the foam shape, but I'm also have to think about what is the shape I'm making of the water underneath the foam. And at any point I could stop and it's still fine like it's fine just as it is but the more I build the layers of contrast to a point right because there is a point you need to stop also <laughs> but it gives that depth and dimension that we're looking for I could go on and on and on. Okay. At some point you do have to stop. <laughs> All right. Now I have to see, do I want it to add any of a dark contrast? Now, before I do that, because I think I do want to bring a little bit more shadow on my shoreline. So I'm going to dry, make sure it's completely dry. Now I have to be really careful because now the gouache, it can be reactivated. So I have to be really careful going close to that gouache line. I want to make sure this is really dry because I'm going to just really carefully bring in some more contrast there. And I want to make sure that I'm not, I don't want to lift up that gouache. So I could have belted that up before I added the gouache, but um, sometimes I don't see where I want more contrast until I get to that step. So it's just kind of a little here, a little there. Um, back and forth, because it's really about looking at it and saying, okay, where does it need this? So I'm adding more of that indigo to my sand tones, and I want it real dry, just like with the gouache. I, I don't want it dripping, because I want real, I want to have some control.
I might even put some of those dark tones just a little bit showing some variation and depth of this little wave area. All right, I'm going to go ahead and dry that. All right, now I want my, my, well, my, my final touch. I want to make this, the beach a little bit, um, have a little more, you know, action going on here and add a little bit of some splatter. So I'm going to add some splatter to the beach just to kind of give a little like pebbly look and then also add some white splatter to the the wave areas just to give it some more you know additional ocean spray movement and so I'm going to just take my um well first let's do the shoreline I don't want my shore splatter to go up into up here necessarily so I want to kind of mask that off I'm just going to tear it doesn't have to be perfect but I just want to roughly tear some paper and protect my shoreline and then I have this old toothbrush. And for this one, I'm gonna use a mix of the, um, I think the raw umber and this blue mix. Oh, I don't, I definitely don't want that. <laughs> I don't want a blob. So if you get something like that, just quickly pick it up. What happens if you if you just push too long and hold it, like you're not moving your fingers, something that can happen. Try not to have too much wetness on, on it so it doesn't do that. You can dab it off on your towel. Okay, so a little bit of some dark splatter there. And then I want some white splatter. I want it real concentrated and not too drippy. I'm just going to dab it off on my cloth. And I'm just doing it in these first three lines. I'm not doing it all the way up because this is this water is a little bit more settled than the front area, which is a little bit more action going on so that's what I'm telling the story of and then this part disappeared because I wasn't patient and I didn't let it dry before I set that page paper on so it kind of picked it up but it, it still has some of those gray spots I think I, want, I still want to make it darker I think I'm going to do I'm going to try with a brush All right, now I'm going to dry it once more. All right, time for the reveal. Now, getting this, this is actually really cheap, horrible masking tape. And I um, I actually put it on my clothes first to put some lint on it to soften it up so it comes off a little easier. When you're removing it, just try to remove it at a very low angle. I try to just kind of peel it back. Um, not don't pull it up this way or you're more likely to tear if you make sure that your page is dry that's going to help but again patience is the word of the day <laughs> right so you don't want to have a great picture and then you start taking your masking tape off and tear your paper especially if it tears into the frame now because i didn't get good coverage there But I can always put matting on it. And there you go. You have a nice foamy, fun, action-packed shoreline, not using any masking fluid. So 
you can certainly, I think using some of those different things, like especially that green crayon, I think that would have been, I probably would have switched um, areas where I used it. I would have put the green over here and the blue back here more, but I think that worked out okay. That worked out okay. So I would, you know, I would consider that again, just use the color that you're going to be working with that matches and do a test drive. Thank you everybody for joining me for this episode of Mini Masterpiece Theater. Only took four times for me to get that right. <laughs> Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find this content helpful. And as always, happy creating. Bye everyone.